In this video, I am going to walk you through training a Quen Image LoRa using my Diffusion Pipe template on RunPath. To start, click the link in the description and it will take you to a GPU selection screen on RunPath. I do recommend to go with at least 32 gigabytes of VRAM, but I also recommend to go with a really strong GPU for lower training, just so you can finish a session in an hour or two hours and you get the results quick so you can iterate and change if there's any issues or if you need to change anything with the training. So I'm going to go with an H200 uh, for this demo, but you can also go with weaker GPUs like the Pro 6000, uh, the, uh, the L40, the L40S, or an H100, whatever fits your budget. So let's select the H200. You can see that the lower training diffusion pipe template is already selected. If it's not, click change template and search for this name in the search box and it should pop up as the first result. Once it's selected, you don't need to edit anything. Scroll all the way down and click deploy on demand. Now, once you're done, go back to the pods menu. I already have my uh, pod deployed. Click on it once it turns to green. Look at the logs and make sure that JupyterLab is running and accessible via the web interface. It should look a bit different to you. This should be the, the last message. You, you see some other logs because I uh, did some changes in the pod while it was running. But just make sure to look for JupyterLab is running and accessible and go back to the connect menu and click on JupyterLab. Let's close this duplicate tab. And once you're in JupyterLab, you should see some folders on the left side. I'll touch them in a bit. Now, to start, click on Terminal and type the word bash, and then type bash again, and interactive start training.sh. This is our training script. You can just click that to autocomplete the name or just type it out as you wish. Once you're done, click Enter, and you should uh, be greeted with the interactive training script. If you have used my template before, you should be familiar uh, with the possibilities and the options, but I'm going to walk you through this uh, for this video. So you can train for Flux as the Excel when, and now I've added a new option called Quen Image. So let's select option number six, and then it's going to ask us to configure our data set. Now, in order to have a data set, you of course need to load in your images. So I'm going to expand this a little bit and go into the image data set here folder, and I've already loaded three images. Of course, for training a character LoRa, you're gonna need more than just three images. I recommend anywhere from 24 to 32 images. So I was going to ask you whether you want to caption images and or videos. We're not running videos, so let's ignore that for now. So if you already have captions and you already have the text files, you can uh, type four and skip the captioning part, or if you want to use automatic captioning that is included in this template, just select one. So let's select one for the sake of this demo, and it's going to ask you to enter a trigger word for image captions. Now, a trigger word is a unique identifier for your character. So of course you need to have a unique trigger word. So let's say that your character name is Alex. Alex is simply not going to cut it as a trigger word. The reason for that is that the AI, uh, the model that you're using, Quen, probably has some familiarity with the word Alex anywhere, somewhere in its data set. So you do want to have a unique identifier. And what I like to do is add a suffix um, like O1 or AI or whatever uh, suffix or prefix that works for you and seems to you like it's a unique identifier. So I like to use O1, so let's do that. And it's going to start the image captioning process. Now you can see that the initial run can take five to 20 minutes. So please have some patience. I have already done the initial run, so it should take roughly 30, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, something like that, and it's already done. It's just uh, three images, and you can see that the captions were generated right here, and we'll review them in a bit. And also, it, um, it downloads the model in the background. So once you get to the screen, just scroll up a little bit and make sure that the image captioning is complete, the model download is completed and verified, and the dataset configuration has been updated. Now let's look over the training configuration summary. And before I touch on the best settings to use, I just want to quickly do a small break and talk about the hideout. The hideout is my exclusive community where I share my own Comfy UI workflows, my exclusive tips and tricks and insider knowledge that I gained over longer than I'm willing to admit that I'm doing this. I am also planning to release a lower training masterclass real soon with a dedicated web tool that is going to help you generate a data set from scratch. 
caption that data set and initiate a lower training job, there's already more than 150 members. The feedback is really good. And I really recommend you to uh, join. If you want to see exactly what you're getting, you can click the link uh, below and go to my Patreon and just read it through this uh, yapping that I do right here. Thank you very much. So let's go back to Jupyter Lab and go over the training configuration. Now, just simply read, we can all do that. Before starting the training, you can modify the default training parameters in these files. And these are the default training parameters that I personally like to use in my lower training sessions. But let's say that you do want to change the settings to something else. So it's going to ask you, would you like to modify these files? Yes, let's pause and modify the files manually. So type two, and it's going to show you the path to the uh, configuration files. If you go back to the root folder uh, by clicking on this small folder icon right here, go to Diffusion Pipe. It's the same path as here. Diffusion Pipe examples QuenTomol, examples QuenTomol file, and you can change the epochs, the save every epochs, the rank. So let's say I want to save every 40 epochs and have 120 epochs with a, a rank of 64. Just make sure to save by clicking Command S or Control S, whether you're on Mac or Windows. Go back to the script. Have you finished configuring the settings? Let's say yes. Then it's going to show you the updated set settings. Do these look correct? Yes. Then before starting the training, it's going to ask you to inspect your captions and make sure that they are correct. So let's go back to the root folder to image data set here and look at the captions. I'm going to do this real quickly. I'm not going to go into depth here, but we have the trigger word, trigger word, sorry, right here, along with the caption, just read through it, make sure that it makes sense and it's um, relevant to the image of your data set. Once you're done, just type yes. Have you reviewed the image captions and ready to proceed? Yes. And then it's going to um, download some dependencies and it's going to start the lower training. Now for Quen, the model initialization can take some time, so please read through this warning. Uh, the script may appear to hang during the initialization. This is normal, so give it five to ten minutes before you actually start to see the steps progressing. Once it's done, go back. You're, you're going to see a uh, small uh, message saying training complete. Go back to the root folder and you're going to have an output folder. I don't have it here right now because I um, haven't trained the LoRa on this specific pod yet, but trust me, it's there. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, really appreciate everyone's feedback. If you have any questions, if you want to share, if you want to ask anything, you can simply join my Discord server. It has almost 6,000 members at this point, and really I want to thank everyone for uh, joining and being a member. Um, again, you can join the hideout if you want. If you want to take your comfy UI level and your AI character level up a bit, up a small notch. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.